Hello again everybody and welcome back to another episode of Landric Plays Darkest Dungeon. Last episode I think we did a short run through the cove possibly uh, and it was it was very short indeed. We came out of it relatively unscathed uh, and we came back to find another event from the town crier. So militia training is going on and the veteran sergeant will be demonstrating his training regime at the guild hall every night for the next week. All those concerned with self-preservation are encouraged to attend. So idle man at arm my idle, idle mana at arms is gain one resolve level. Uh, we only have one mana arms, uh, Saving, Savingy. But uh, I mean, I don't. I'm not especially fond of the mana arms class. They're okay, but I guess getting a free resolve level for uh, well for free isn't such a bad thing. So what are we gonna do? Well, let's take a look at the embark screen. Ah, so we have unlocked the um, the first boss of the cove. So we have to kill the siren. Um, so who would we take on this? Well, I guess we'd take... Hmm, let's sort by level. Yeah, so I think we'd take Columbus, even though you're a little bit stressed, but you know, healing is always good, particularly when you're dealing with a boss. Uh, Drew obviously would be our frontline fighter. Uh, Ballard is pretty good, but given that he do does a lot of bleed damage, and I think these scaly, horrible fish people are immune to bleed, makes him a little bit uh, a little bit not suited for this task. Ah, we could put in um, Brynn, who does more um, plague damage, so I think we'd yeah, we'd want to unlock this Noxious Blast as well. So we'll put you there. And then, ideally, we want another frontline fighter. Uh, which I think means we'd have to have Savigny, because he's the only other person that's uh, a suitable level, so we can't put any of these guys because they uh, they think this quest is beneath them now. Unless because it's a boss, they get uh, no. See, which is interesting actually, because it means that if we do this um, if we do this boss fight, everyone will uh, almost certainly level up, which means we're actually going to be forced to only do um, uh, what are they called veteran level runs. Hmm. So maybe we just put Savigny in this one. I mean, technically he won't get the free level, which means this will actually set him back a little bit, but I'm not that concerned with it. But what it does mean is, ideally we need, yeah, a couple more level one um, frontline-y people, because we've got these two um, Arbalists, and we've got Ballard and uh, the Doctor, who will probably be alright at the back. But yeah, so I think we're going to need more space in our roster. So with that in mind, we'll go to the stagecoach and uh, barracks. Yeah, so if we get this, we can fit another four Word people. Traveling. Ambition is stirring in distant cities. So I tell you what we I'll can do. Use this. I will get you. I will get... Hmm. I might get another jester. I might wait. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get uh, Framen here. I said I don't like the men at arms class particularly, but if I leave him behind, we still get the benefits of that um, the event. So he'll get a free level up, which is kind of nice. Uh, okay, so let's sort by activity and just make sure you're all leveled up. Nope, you need... Uh, oh, that's right, we can upgrade your stuff here. Do you want to change your skills around? The adrenaline rush is nice, because it cures... Um, Blight and bleed. The healing's pretty rubbish, but meh. Bleed out. So we can bleed the person in front, and it but it debuffs us. I don't think this is such a viable skill. Breakthrough's nice because it does three damage to everyone at the front and it moves us forwards. And because we want to be at the f at the very front, I'm not worried about it moving us. The debuff is kind of annoying, but if it means we can score two kills in one, that would be quite useful. The Yorp is also has that debuff, but it does a stun, and it stuns two people, which is, again, pretty valuable. Maybe I unlock both of these, and mm, the problem is the Wicked Hack doesn't have the debuff, so it's pretty pretty useful for us to keep that in there. Uh, so do we want... Oh yeah, and there's If It Bleeds as well, which attacks the middle, and this one doesn't have the debuff either. So what's, ah, this one actually does 15% damage and has a higher crit chance. Though I don't think we ever really use it. Yeah, I definitely want to keep that around. Iron Swan. Do we want to keep the Iron Swan? It means we can attack the back. 
otherwise we're sort of stuck with you. But I think, given that we've got um, Brennan and Columbus who can do, I won't say reliable damage to the back, but can do damage to the back, maybe we swap that out and maybe we just get both of these. They're situational, but I think we're going to get more use out of them. Uh, so we'll grab that. I don't think there's much point upgrading this one, because the Cure Blight and Bleed is the only reason I'm keeping it, so getting an extra one hit point isn't super fantastic. I mean, the extra 2% damage, I guess, is nice, but I think we'll save our money for now. Um, likewise, the Yorp, how does that... Uh, what changes there? Doesn't change the stun chance. Oh, there we go. Ah, it does change the stun chance. I was, uh, I was reading the tooltip wrong. So it's higher accuracy, slightly higher stun chance. I think we'll go for the slightly higher stun chance. And what does this change? Slightly more accuracy. Same debuff. So, meh, we'll leave that one. So before I forget, let's go to you. And let's get rid of Swan and Bleed Out. And put these two in. Uh, you've still got all your camp skills, good. Uh, who else do we want to check and upgrade? So I think we want to probably upgrade your stuff, so we'll upgrade Crush, because that's our standard damage ED uh, And honestly, that's really the only skill of yours I probably am going to use. We've got some buffs, which I'm terrible for not using. A repost, or rather Retribution, which activates Repost. Mm. Uh, the Guard, meh. What's the upgrade do? Gives extra protection, which is pretty good, but... Uh, and this debuffs people. Does a little bit of extra debuff. Does a tiny bit of damage on everyone. So, I'm gonna get it. And does this... this stuns... and it's extra stun chance. Okay, we'll do that. Oops. Don't wanna quit, because we need to upgrade you as well. In fact, I need to mess around all of your skills, because we want to unlock Noxious Blast. Uh, and the Plague Grenade. So, these are sort of my two favourite skills on Plague Doctors. I don't know if you'd noticed. Blinding Gas is pretty good as well, but, um, ooh, but actually, yeah, that is quite neat. I don't think we need to upgrade it, but I might hang on to it. Emboldening Vapors is a buff, eh. Disorientating Blast, also relatively good, so that uh, can attack somebody anywhere on the back three rows, whereas Blinding Gas stuns potentially two people at the back. Uh, hmm. So I think I'm going to swap out... Hang on, one, two, three, four... So, which do we get rid of? So we get rid of Emboldening Vapors and put this on. And then, if we wanted to get the um, the melee attack so we can do a little bit of extra damage to the front, do we swap out for Incision? I don't think we do. I think we stick with what we've got. I put, I'm sort of tempted to swap out this uh, Disorientating Blast for the, uh, for the Blinding Gas, just because we can potentially do a double stun. But I'm not going to worry about doing damage to the front line, because that's what Drew and uh, Savigny are for. Cool. And next is Columbus. You should be... Ooh, you're not upgraded either. I guess we only recently unlocked the um, the next level of the guild, so we'll upgrade all of your skills, because they're pretty invaluable. And before I forget, do we have any trinkets that, uh, that would be good for you? Because you don't have any right now. So we can uh, give you this. Hmm... I think I'm going to give you the garlic, just so you're a little more resilient. We'll maybe swap it out later when we get some sort of deliberate healing stuff. Minus 25% stun chance. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the Book of Intuition and then this. So it cancels out the speed uh, problem. It means we're less, slightly less likely to do stuns, but hopefully that'll encourage me to focus on healing. You don't have anything either. Uh, are there any class restrictions on these things? Nope. Uh, hmm. None of these sort of appeal to me that much. You've got something. You've got something as well. Eh, I think that'll be fine, trinket-wise. At least I remembered to check, even if I'm not actually giving them anything useful. Uh, we'll upgrade your weapons and armor as well, as we're as we're doing a boss. You're upgraded already. Lovely. Okay, I think we're all set here. Oop, not the Nomad Wagon. That's not the button I wanted. 
Uh, I think we're just going to um, embark. So, a little bit of uh, preparation and stuff. But hopefully it'll uh, come in handy. Uh, that's right, this counts as a medium one. So you've got skills. You don't have all your skills. Maybe we should get... Maybe we should go back and grab you something. Uh, you've got four. Mm, yeah, let's unlock the an extra skill for uh, Sivinny. I know, I know, you want to get to the combat as soon as possible, but hopefully this will keep us alive just a little bit longer. So I'm probably going to prioritize these, because the, the class-specific camp skills are usually pretty good. So look at that. Party-wide, uh, dodge, and crit. And that's self-only, so I, yeah, we'll go with that one. I'm sure we won't ha necessarily have time to use it, depending on the way we, uh, depending on the way we, um, the other skills we decide to use. Like sanctuary, we're almost certainly going to use because it prevents nighttime ambush. But otherwise, we'll go with that. Uh, and your skills, meh. I'm less worried about uh, upgrading yours. All right, let's em let's properly embark now. So we'll provision. Got some firewood. Got some anti venom. We're going to take. A reasonable amount of food. That's probably enough. A couple of shovels. A couple of torches. A couple of keys. A couple of herbs. Uh, so last time we were in the cove, we came across a horrible crab monster that did ludicrous amounts of bleed damage. But because this counts as an apprentice run, I don't think we'll come across them, so I don't think we have to worry about bandages. Uh, so I think we're going to go with that. My lofty position wasn't always accompanied by the fear of office. And there was a time when I could walk the streets or raise a glass in the tavern without concern for molestation. Fateful as the tide, one precocious village waif made it her hobby to shadow my every errand. It was charming then. Troublesome later. Hmm. Interesting. So first the hag, and then the siren. He uh, he seems to have a habit of uh, being stalked by horrible, horrible beasties. I always wondered what became of the unfortunate little whiff. Ah, so maybe it's his own doing. So yeah, maybe we shouldn't feel so. I mean, certainly most of the horrible monsters are his own doing. So it definitely fit with the theme there. Okay, so again, a relatively linear dungeon with a couple of uh, extra twists and turns. I think it's probably unlikely the, um, the siren's hiding here, so I think we're just going to follow this main path and see what happens. Obviously it'll be annoying if we have to backtrack the whole way, but... Oop, and straight into a trap. Good start as we mean to Mind go on. that such missteps are the exception, and not the rule. Uh, so, that's right. We get this little marker now, <coughs> excuse me, to say that, uh, to say that that item definitely works. And Finding wow. stuff is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. So the, the holy waters, I think, pretty useless for us right now. Though, will it get rid of that debuff? I think it will, and as it's relatively, uh, oh no, it increases resistances. Well, let's just use it and see what happens. Ah, okay, so yeah, it doesn't get rid of the debuff. It gives you debuff resistance, but it doesn't get rid of it. But at least I guess you're um, you're all going to be slightly more resilient going into this fight. So, because you've got the uh, the chalice, you've got crazy speed on the first round, but it does mean uh, we're going to have less chance of stunning somebody. Though, you guys aren't very resistant to it, so let's let's, uh, let's go with a stun on the back line while uh, Drew and our uh, man at arms deal with the front. So we'll try and uh, slice you down before... Um, ooh, yeah, that's a bit nasty. Hey, you resisted the debuff. Maybe that's because of this. What debuff has that given you? Minus two dodge. The bleed's not too bad. So, like, an extra two damage. It's a bit annoying that we can't get rid of you, or rather we couldn't get rid of you before you acted. Give them no quarter. But it was just sort of a toss-up between which one of these would actually end up going first, so... Ah, well. So we need use our play grenade, stack up some damage on both these guys at the back. Kinda handy. Four damage per three rounds. So you're dead next round. You're not yet, but so if we can do four damage to you before your next turn, then you're doomed as well. So I think that's what we'll do. Uh, and we'll just use a straight up. Ooh, that's annoying. 
So it'd be nice if we could have taken them out, especially a guaranteed takeout. But instead, we're going to focus on you because you're quite nasty and we can actually reach you. Uh, interesting. So I guess we, yeah, we use you to do damage here. Stack up some extra blight and hope that uh, Savigny can. There we go. Nice. So we're these two are definitely going to die next round. There goes one. There goes the other. So those guys have really high speed, so they tend to act first. So it's nice that we have that blight uh, ticking and ready. We did take a fair amount of punishment, uh, particularly Savigny. So I think we'll focus on doing a little bit of healing next fight if we can. We still have the camp that we can do before um, before the boss. Okay, so there is a curio in there, but we do have to get a battle through. We have to go through a battle to get to it. So I think we're going to carry on going this way. These parts look relatively safe. We'll uh, use a shovel on this. So some extra uh, citrine, which isn't worth a huge amount, but at least it stacks. And nicely, we get some crests. Uh, bass relief, a puzzling the ancient sculpture of dizzying implication. That seems like the sort of thing that we want to definitely uh, touch. Ooh. Lasting impact on the hero, ruined explorer. Not, um, I mean, not super useful right now, but I guess relatively useful in the long run. So 80%, 70%, 80%, 70%. So we'll go with you, because hopefully it'll burn off a tiny bit of stress. Keep the torches nice and high. See if we can minimise that stress, because again, we'd get more loot for having a lower torch, but given that we're against a boss, I want to minimise the amount of punishment that we can take either on the way there and once we get to there, because because certainly the last boss against the hag, it seemed relatively um, straightforward. We were doing very well until we got there, and then things quickly went downhill, and we sort of got out of that by the skin of our teeth. So the um, so the more the better shape we arrive at the Siren Inn, the more likely we are to uh, still get out of it, even if it is just by the skin of our teeth. Another obstacle. Another mariner. Another misfortune. And a box. What's in the box? Heirlooms are in the box. If only Lovely. treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. So we've still got plenty of food left, and we get another scout chance. Oops, so there's definitely going to be a battle in here. Hopefully we'll get a scout here, because that'll tell us which uh, path we should take. Ooh, another hunter event. Which is a bit annoying, but it does heal us a tiny bit. Not as much as it would if we were sat down and rested and camping, but it'll do. Ooh, another journal. Let's, uh, let's have a read of this. Ah, this is Darius. So, three of six. So I think we've seen the last page of this, but let's have a look at what, uh, what this one says. Day six. As we travelled from the hamlet, an eerie dread grew. We all felt it, but did our best to shrug it off. Sleep was difficult until Raven, one of my companions, passed me a bitter concoction. The most devout of us, Therian, prayed softly for our safety. Superstitious, but well-intentioned, I suppose. I am already falling asleep. Hmm. Yeah, well, we know how that expedition ends. It does not go well for Darius. Okay, so we've got this treasure room. Luckily, we got a surprise on these guys. So I think what we're going to try and do is take out... Hmm. That's an excellent question, actually. I think we're going to try and uh, take out as many of these squishier ones as we can while they're surprised, because otherwise this guardian will uh, will um, start falls, defending them, which is a bit nasty. Sack up some blight at the back there, and then nice. Is broken. So that one damage actually did count. Stress waves irritating, but we both dodged it, which is good. And you're going to go for an attack, which we dodged as well. Okay. So I think we're handling this fight quite well, but, you know, that's always a relatively dangerous thing to say. Oh, it does seem like can't stun at the very back. Fine, then. Ooh, okay. Crit. Crit works just as well as a stun. Uh, and now we're just going to whittle you down. Uh, so we can use Noxious Blast on you, which gets around your protection level, which is good. Which is why I'm glad I picked it up. It means we can do that blight to the front as well. You resist the bleed, even if you take the damage. And then we can start dealing some more damage of our own, and then... If we can do four damage to you, you're dead this turn. So, maybe what I want to do is uh, do a, a party heal. 
We'll just get a tiny bit of extra a uh, healing abatement. before we kill this guy. There you go. So you're definitely dead. So we'll do that instead. Uh, oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. So we can technically use the self heal. And get one extra hit point. Just squeeze as much, as many hit points as we can out of this fight. This is how a life is taken. Okay. Um, hmm. So we can't take all of this stuff with us. So we'll. I think I'll light the torch. The light. I'll take the portrait. The promise of safety. And it would be nice to be able to take the gold because the gold stacks very, very well. Certainly a lot better than uh, some of these, or rather the gems stack okay, but, you know, we're like more likely to find gold than we are these gems. But I think what I'll do is I'll get rid of the anti-venom, because I don't know if we're going to need it. Uh, so we'll get rid of that. We'll take the gold instead, and then we'll see what's in the strong box. Uh, another torch. But we did get the gold, which means the stacking works okay. So, uh, And the light level's full, so we can't even use it. Ah, but we do get the scout, so lovely. Ah, so we are going to have to face a battle before uh, whichever direction we go. If we go this way, we're going to have to face two battles. So I think we're going to go here. Uh, because this room's empty, so we'd have to go around this way. Uh, worst case, anyway. Does that make sense? I think so. So I'm assuming the, uh, the siren's going to be either here or here. Of course, she could be in this room over here, which would be a bit frustrating. So I, I think we'll get here, hope we get a scout, and whether or not we do, I think I'll camp there. So we'll be able to rest, we'll be able to buff ourselves. Um, so this would do between 4 and 9 damage if it hits, and this would do 2 and 3 damage, but potentially stun. I think we actually go for the damage. Ooh, that's annoying. I was going to say, I think we go for the damage, but... So that's slightly wasteful, because there's only one person to target. Uh, we could do this. I think we will. So this will do four damage. Ah, uh, if only we had that one. Okay, so Bellow, again. So this will probably do between one and two damage. There we go. So now he's at least definitely dead, and everyone else is debuffed. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. So not an ideal start, because we are going to take a fair amount of damage from this, but we are close to camping, hopefully. And they're both debuffed, so they should be relatively easy to hit. So we'll go with a Noxious Blast on this guy at the front. Uh, and you know what, we're going to go for another break, so sort of spread the damage uh, across them. Ah. I think we'll just go for the, the semi-guaranteed the kill there crumbles. if we can. And then... It would have been nice to use a heal instead, but they wouldn't have. Uh, they wouldn't have guaranteed. It would not be a guaranteed kill. As victories mount, so too will resistance. Um, we could hang on to the bandages, but I don't think we will. So I'm almost driven to camp more by uh, more by wanting to get rid of this stuff. Uh, interesting. I do want the journal page because it sort of builds up our collection even though it's actually not technically a valuable thing to bring back. Oop, four of six. Day seven, we tangled with some unruly louts. Raven called them cultists. They were ferocious but clumsy. See, it's barely even a paragraph. Uh, I think we'll get rid of the medicinal herbs. Technically a thing that... Well, here's the thing. The only thing they're going to really come in useful for is purifying those horrible fish things so we can get more loot. But as we can't carry any more loot, why carry it around, right? So we'll do that. We use another torch, and then get ready for this fight. Okay, it's this um, same party, if that makes sense. But this time they're not surprised, so we don't get to, we don't get to move before they do. So let's. Hmm. let's do some damage to you because I think you've got a stun, which is really annoying. Uh, you can do the uh, the play grenade. Sack up some da double damage at the back. Yeah, there we go. That's the stun chance. But we, res oh, no. we resisted the debuff, but we got the stun. That's a bit frustrating. Uh, 
you might as well try and finish those if they don't dodge, which I guess means Drew is going to be in charge of finishing that. Uh, it's super overkill, but it's nice to actually remove him from the fight. And it doesn't give us the debuff. Okay, so you guard them, which is sort of to be expected. Though, you are going to die of Blight basically on your own, which is fine. So if I use... So you're almost going to die next turn anyway. Ooh, a crit's not what we want right now. Alright, so you're, you're just going to focus on uh, the Guardian. You're also going to focus on the Guardian. Now that sort of crit is what we like. Uh, good we dodged that, because I think that causes bleed. You are going to focus on uh, just healing our Doctor. Who ironically isn't that good at healing. And so we don't technically need to... Uh, ah, so you need at least one more damage to guarantee you die next turn. Uh, and I think, so you don't need any more damage, but I think if we do this, yeah, it actually blights the guy at the front so we get double damage spread this way, which is actually really helpful. So we don't have to be too concerned about healing uh, healing everyone up if we're about to camp, but it is nice to have uh, most of our health. There we go, another crit, excellent stuff. And then you're both basically doomed. In fact, you are both definitely going to die this turn, right? So sneak an extra hit point and an extra crit, which gets rid of some stress, so that's lovely. So, you're gone, and you're gone as well. Excellent. This expedition at least promises success. So, 20% move resist, minus one speed. I don't... So I could equip it to you. So, I don't think this would be helpful to equip, is the thing. We actually passed this up in the, uh, in the hamlet. We could have given it to, um, Brennan. However, I'm going to give it to him just so he can carry it and then bring it back. The move resist I'm not that enamoured by and the minor speed is annoying but it's technically worth gold so hmm, the question is now what do we get rid of so we can get the crests because crests are always valuable. It's a shame we can't uh, camp first and then get it but I will. So these are worth 375 each. These are worth 1000 each. The problem is these don't... I mean, if we find more staff eyes, that's great, because they stack really well, but we're unlikely to find them as much as we are everything else. Um, I guess we get rid of the Onyx. It's a lot of money, but crests are even better, and this will stack if we find more. So, ah, excellent, we do get a scout. So there is the boss. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to rest here, we're going to go down here, and depending on what state we're in, maybe we'll go to this treasure room. So we are like fully um, fully stocked on treasure. I suppose if it's the very last room we can afford to throw away some of this stuff. But for now we're going to camp. First thing I'm going to do... A spark oh. without kindling is a goal without hope. So the very first thing I'm going to do is feast. So we burn off a little bit of stress. Basically all back to full health, which is nice. Uh, and we're going to make sure you prevent nighttime ambush, which is very, very handy. Uh, so we've got eight, uh, eight hours left, I guess. How do we want to spend it? Stress, r remove blight and disease. Mm, if we had a disease, that'd actually be quite useful because it saves us a lot of money. You're not the no, you don't have a disease. I think what we're going to do is we're going to focus on buffing. So if you're in position one, you have crazy, crazy buffs: ten percent attack, twenty percent damage, uh, and eight percent crit potentially. Though that will take most of our. Uh, most of our time remaining. So maybe what we do is tactics and weapons practice. Slightly um, slightly reduced buffs but across the entire party which is nice. So yeah we'll do weapons practice and we'll do tactics. The key to a continued heartbeat is to move your feet. That sounds like good advice. Skip through all of these uh, Little dialogue Radiance, options. May we find victory. No ambush, which is wonderful. We'll uh, crack open this oyster. Wealth beyond measure. And we get some gold. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. All right, let's go straight to the boss. Uh, so last time, 
we managed to touch this and get something good. Let's try it again. Natural eye. I don't know what that does. How do we... Here we go. Uh, natural eye, natural eye, natural eye. Five, plus five accuracy for range skills. Not that you have any range skills. It's kind of annoying that you can even learn that quirk, but ah oh well. Could be worse. Could have been something horrible. And here we go. This is the siren. The devils have remade the poor girl in their image. She is their queen and their slave. So this is the siren. Gets uh, two uh, two actions per round. Um, fairly resistant to bleed and relatively resistant to blight. I think we're just going to pile on some early damage. We've got quite a lot of health. Uh, we could try and get a stun. Let's try and try that. Yeah, 50% chance. It was worth a, it was worth a shot. Uh, we could go for another stun on you. Uh, or we could go for the Noxious Blast. Slightly better chance to get a Blight than a stun, so let's go for that. Ah, resist. Song of Desire. Oh, so you resisted whatever effect the Song of Desire was going to do. Uh, and in return we'll hit you in the face with our stick. And then you get to move again and you're going to try Song of Desire on them again. And you resisted again. So I'm sure that's going to trigger sooner or later. But maybe if we get a stun. Oh, resist again. Yeah, I think we're just going to focus on damage. Oops, Song of Desire. Ah. So, uh, Drew has been uh, stolen, enamoured by uh, the Siren, so we could deal damage to Drew, but that seems counterproductive. I think we're just going to keep wailing on uh, the Siren. Pressure crash. Ah, uh, that's going to be a, yeah, it's a bunch of stress. So you're going to take stress and a then attack us. And, and a brain. crit. Not fantastic. Maybe we stun Drew. We can't see your resists. That's frustrating. Uh, in that case, let's just keep piling damage on the Siren and hopefully that frees Drew. Uh, let's do it again. Because we are whittling you down very, very fast. Ooh, devour that. Doesn't look horrible. Ooh, that looks horrible. Uh, so that's a party-wide bleed. It's only three damage. Why can't you? Oh, you can't do battlefield medicine because you're technically no longer in third place. Uh, so, we'll just try and stack up a blight instead. You resisted that as well. You're resisting a lot of things, but you're not resisting a big pointy stick to the face. More stress, but you dodged it all. Nice. Ooh, and you're going to break through everyone again. So. There we go. Drew's actually doing almost all of the damage to our uh, to our party. You want to try and steal? Oop, you didn't resist it this time. Now you're stuck right at the front, which is particularly uh, particularly bad. So I guess we'll just see if we can get a stun. And it just shuffled you around, which I think is good for us because I don't know how many skills of yours work in third position. Uh, we'll just do a little bit of extra healing because Drew has a skill that will move her forwards as she attacks, if she can use it from there. So you move forward and go for a stun, but we resist. And you're going to do yet more stress damage. There we go, so Breakthrough will move us forward, which is nice. Technically damage is uh, Brennan. Not, not Brennan. Um, Sabinyi. Uh, okay. So we started off, like, absolutely tanking her health. But she's whittling us down, so we have to get rid of her sooner rather than later, so I think we're just going to pile on the judgement. There we go, a couple more of those and we'll be, uh, we'll be in good stead, but at least the bowels are stacking up. So you're now doing three damage per round for three rounds, that's the problem. Uh, so we could swap round so you've got more options later, but it, that wastes a turn, so we might as well try for the stun. Like, See, 50, you've got 50% stun resist, and you seem to be resisting all of the stuns. Ah. 
that's not good. Uh, so I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, it's only one damage per round for two rounds. But because attacking her will attack um, that, uh, him instead, and we know he's coming back this round, it makes more sense to just heal up and bleed. And then, like, weirdly, our, um, our Vestal is doing most of the damage this time. I wonder if, uh, oh no, I was going to say, I wonder if the Siren prioritises our uh, more, sort of, uh, our more traditional damage deals. But nope, going for the Vestal again. But you resisted. Good job. Uh, and then we'll go for the Breakthrough again to move you forwards. Doesn't do as much damage, but it puts, uh, puts Brynn in a better position. Uh, we are going to start moving you forwards, though, because... Actually, that protection might have been a good idea. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Ooh, you're going to crit Mortality all of us. Ooh, that's not good. Strike. So we need to uh, we need to finish this fight. Basically this round, because otherwise that's going to trigger again. And now you're stuck doing disorientating blasts, which does nothing. Alright. It's all, all down to you, Columbus. Come on, you can do this. There we go. Hideous matriarch, bio queen of the aquatic depths. She has no place in the sane world. So this gets a blood charm, which uh, I might as well give straight to you. Uh, and the Eldritch Slayer's Ring, 25% damage versus Eldritch, but minus eight dodge. That doesn't sound great. I feel like we should probably get rid of this. Um. Do we want to go and fight another treasure room? I suspect not, so I think we'll just get rid of... Um, uh, we'll just chuck the food, in fact. We can eat the food. Uh, we'll take that, and then we're done. And we could go for that other treasure room, but I think I think this is plenty. So we're going we're gonna to return to the hamlet. We won't tempt fate. There we go, third boss of the series done. We get a bunch of gold, we get the Book of Sanity, which sounds like an excellent thing to have. Minus 20% stress. A whole bunch of extra gold from uh, stuff we looted. And a whole bunch of extra crests as well, which we need for all those upgrades. So you're, you're both level 3 now. You two are both very close to being level 3, but we can probably squeeze another run out of you. The Fits, plus 3 speed, minus 5 accuracy, minus 5 crit. Mm, it's not terrible, but we might want to get rid of that. Slow Reflexes... Well, I guess they sort of balance each other out, or rather, it balances out this one. Slow draw, minus four speed on the first round. Mm. Plus five dodge is pretty good, and ruin scrounger. Extra scouting chance, but it replaces on guard, which gives you extra um, extra bonuses on the first round. Mm. Overall, not too bad though. So I'm happy with how this went. We still didn't lose anyone, which is good. That's the important thing. So we're uh, building up our squad. We're rounding everyone out and we are slowly whittling down the bosses of the Darkest Dungeon. So join me again next episode, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, take on the ruins, I think. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.